Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today, we are on episode number 118. And today we're going to be going over the basics of an installation profile. What is a Drupal installation profile? How do you use it? And how do you write one of your own if you need to? Before we get started, as always, I am Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. You can also go to codecrowdy.com. Sign up for the newsletter over here on the left. Today's episode is sponsored by Drupalize.me. If you're looking to learn more about Drupal, you need to check out Drupalize.me. They have tons of videos from the very basics to some of the most advanced Drupal co topics you will ever need to learn about. Go ahead and check them out. Use the coupon code CK20FEB for 20% off. Let's go ahead and get started. So what exactly is a Drupal installation profile? Well, I've pulled up a Drupal.org site right here. It's node 306.267, excuse me, 306.267. And it talks about how to use an installation profile. It also talks about what is an installation profile. I'm not going to go over every piece that it says here, but I'm just going to give a quick summary. Basically, every Drupal site that you build, it has an installation profile that's selected when you install the site. Each site only has one installation profile. It's selected when the site is originally installed. So if you already have a site that's up and running, well, it, it has the installation profile that it has. So whatever you selected when you installed is the installation profile that it comes with or that it's currently using. There's really no way to change an installation profile easily. You could, of course, if you want to get into the database and do some other you know things. But for the most part, once you have installed the site, it has an installation profile already built into it. All installation profile is, it seems really complicated, all it is is just, for the most part, a collection of modules that your Drupal website is going to be installed with. You can also do things during an installation profile when, when the site is being installed, such as install various, or set up various blocks, install or add various content, do other setup tasks so that once the, the system or the site is done building, done installing, it has uh, prepackaged and uh, content and block settings and all this type of stuff. So, first thing to realize is it's not all that complicated. There's really installation profiles at its core are very simple. Just a way to basically package up reusable modules and configuration and themes and reuse them on a new, fresh installation. Some examples of di different distributions on Drupal. If you go to drupal.org slash projects, project slash distributions, you can see a bunch of examples. Commerce Kickstart is the first one up here. Basically, it's the quickest way to get up and running with Drupal Commerce. So it basically, out of the box, if you install uh, uh, this installation profile before you or drop it in before you install your Drupal site and you select commerce kickstart as the installation profile it's going to give you a whole bunch of Drupal commerce related modules a whole bunch of setups so out of the box when you start you almost have a completely working Drupal commerce store for selling products online open publish is another one it's more of a distribution for online news industries open public it's for government and public policy organizations. Drupal Commerce or Commons is for uh, community-based websites, and so all these things are, as you can see, they're they're a prepackaged set of. It comes with Drupal Core Plus. It comes with a set of modules and themes and configuration for making these specific type sites. Just saves you from having to download all the modules manually, install them, add content or configurations you know download the themes so it's really a simple way to get up and running there's another page on drupal.org for how to write a drupal 7 installation profile installation profiles are similar to modules there's an info file a dot install file and a dot profile file so this is node 1022020 on drupal.org and it talks all about how to write a drupal installation profile let's go ahead and take a look at some Drupal in, or installation profiles that come with Drupal 7. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that this is just a basic Drupal 7 site. It has a sites directory. You can go into the sites all folder, download modules, themes. 
But the important thing is here there's this profiles directory. Inside this profiles directory there are currently four installation profiles. Three of these are co that come with standard Drupal, minimal, standard, and testing. Commerce Kickstart is one that I've downloaded and dropped in here, so we can look at that as well. So the first one we're going to look at is the minimal installation profile. The minimal installation profile simply do installs a smaller amount of modules than the standard and has a little bit less setup. So if you can get started without having all of the extra Drupal core modules installed. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is the minimal.info file. So here's the info file of this installation profile. This is one that comes with core as I mentioned before. And it says it starts with only a few modules enabled. The few modules are dependent or block and db log. So those dependencies, so those are automatically going to be enabled when you select this installation profile and you go through the process of installing this Drupal site. If we go into the minimal.install file, you'll see it implements this hook underscore install. And this is used to enable some of the standard blocks. So you can see it gets the default theme, it enables uh, s some of the different blocks here, the content block, the, the main content block, the login block, navigation, and management block for the help section. And so it, this is simply just dropping blocks in when you select this installation profile. So when you start you have a couple blocks already dropped into the default regions in the Barctic theme. And then in the minimal.profile there's really not much here. The only thing is this one line which you'll see in a lot of profile or dot profile modules. It's just a simple line that sets the site name with whatever the server name is. So it doesn't start with a blank site name. So you'll notice if I go to the standard profile, it's exactly the same besides the fact that it's using standard because that's the name of the profile instead of minimal. We can look at the standard.info file. You can see there's a there's much more dependencies here. This means that any modules in this list are going to get turned on when you install a standard profile Drupal 7 site. So you can see there's things like RDF and the toolbar and the overlay where on the minimal.info you'll notice that there, there just is not as many modules there. If we take a look at the standard.install, so you can tell there's much more here that goes on when you install a standard Drupal 7 installation profile or a Drupal 7 site with the standard installation profile. Still goes, goes through hook install and add some text formats. You can see it enables some standard blocks. It creates your basic node type. So if you use standard profile, you'll get a basic page and an article content type out of the box. So what and the reason I'm going through these is because if you're writing your own installation profile, some of this stuff that is in the standard installation profile or minimal installation profile can be basically dropped into your own installation profile and just reused and modified based on your needs. So you don't really have to rewrite the wheel. And at the end here I'm going to show you a couple tools that you can use if you want to build your own in a little bit simpler way. So the last one we're going to take a look at, and you'll notice that so far all these are pretty similar. Just the standard the standard one has a few more options, of course. So we're going to take a look at Commerce Kickstart, which is not a core installation profile, but it's one that you can download on Drupal.org. You'll see here there's a lot more files inside here. There's a themes folder, a scripts folder, a modules folder, and a libraries folder. So also these .make files, which I'm probably going to be covering tomorrow, how to write a .make file to download your install or your different modules and themes for your installation profile or your platform. But you'll notice that there's still a .profile file, and there's still a .in .install and a .info. I'm going to open those up, and then we're going to come back in and cover up what some of these other things are as well. So I'll open these three files. You'll notice the commerce kickstart.info. You can see this info file is much larger. A lot of the distributions on Drupal.org are going to have larger 
inst or info files because they have to install a lot more modules, a lot more themes when the sites are actually built or installed. So you can see they r install the core modules first, then they install commerce dependencies. So these are modules that are Drupal Commerce needs to run then installs all the various commerce modules so all of these are dependencies various commerce services other contributed modules features migrate search api and other distribution related modules for commerce kickstart so you can see that list is much larger the install file is also much larger we're not going to go through all of it because it's as you can see almost a thousand lines of code but it is similar to the, the any of these other install files except the fact that it does a lot more when you install a commerce kickstart site it has to because it sets up almost a completely functioning Drupal commerce store so you can take a look at that it's relatively well documented and commented so you can read the comments and find out what it's doing you can also look at this dot profile for commerce kickstart here it Im implements uh, default image style also has a hook form alter similar to the other ones but it sets more values does a hook system info alter and just a bunch more other things hook update projects alter hook update status alter and you can look all these up on drupal.org and see what they're doing they're, like I said this is well documented you can follow along and find out what this dot profile file is actually doing once it's installed make sure to read on how to write an installation pro Drupal 7 installation profile as that talks through what can go inside an install file and what can go in the dot profile file before we stop here today I'm also going to cover inside the dot info file for commerce kickstart there's a lot of dependencies that aren't in standard Drupal and you might be wondering, well, how is it going to install the rules module if the rules module isn't in my site's all modules directory? Or how is it going to install the views module? Well, inside this distribution or installation profile, there's a modules and themes directory. Inside this themes, you can see there's the commerce kickstart theme, omega, omega kickstart, and shiny. All these are just various themes. And once you get inside the modules, you'll see there's contributed modules such as your views and your rules and so Drupal knows since you're using this installation profile to look here for modules and themes so any themes that you need can be dropped into your installation profile and you can use dependencies from these th or these themes or modules to install when you actually are installing a Drupal site so for instance cloud zoom is an option in here which means I can add a dependency to my .info file for CloudZoom, meaning that when I install this Drupal 7 site, CloudZoom is going to be enabled if it's in that dependencies list. One important thing to note when you're building a .info file for installation profile, make sure to, if there are any dependencies that come first, such as rules or views in the case of Commerce Kickstart, you want those to show up above the modules that depend on them. So rules as an example shows up before a lot of the commerce modules that's going to require rules. Just something to keep in mind there. And the last thing we're going to cover real quick before we finish up is on Drupal.org there's a project slash profiler. It's this profiler project. It's actually not a module. It's just a library for writing installation profiles you can take a look at some of the links here and learn about what this does there's also a profile builder which is an extension of the profiler installation profile simplifier and it cr creates a downloadable package that gives you a well-made installation profile in just make file based on the site it's installed on so you basically it sounds like you turn this on you're able to download basically a pre-built installation profile based on your Drupal site. So if you already have a Drupal site built and you want to deploy other sites like it or you want other people to be able to build sites like yours you can use this tool and it'll help you get started. I don't know all the ins and outs of it. I haven't used it. I've always built mine manually 
but this is a tool here for you to use and take a look at and see if it helps you out. So that's all we're going to talk about today on learning more about Drupal installation profiles. As I said before, there's nothing really complicated about them. Some of them look a little intimidating when you look at how many lines of code they are. But if you think about it in its simplest form, it's just a way for you as a user to install the Drupal 7 site and get a set of modules, themes, and other types of configuration right out of the box. So instead of getting standard Drupal, you're getting uh, set up for a Drupal Commerce site with a bunch of bells and whistles with modules and themes already there. Or you're getting a system for publishers in the case of Open Publish. So go ahead and look at these other distributions on Drupal. There's 573 listed here. You may be able to find some that you can use in the future for future Drupal sites rather than starting from scratch and use those to get a jump start on your Drupal development. Thanks again to Drupalize.me for sponsoring this episode and thank you for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal. We'll see you next time.